The simple fact is that we do not control when the wind blows or how strong it blows. When there is a high over Europe, like there is today, for example, you get a huge area where there's very little to no wind, and the wind drops, and with it, the wind power generation. So what happens then? Because nuclear power and coal power, the base loads of our power generation, cannot quickly change. It needs something like gas, which is highly controllable and can be switched on and off to cope with the variable demand throughout the day. So let's see how this works in the real world. So here, in this interesting graph, we show the wind power generated in the UK. But as you can see, as the wind drops, the gas supply has to go up. This is always the case. When the wind is low, the gas has to be high to make up for it. And when the wind is high, the gas drops. So no matter what, you have to always have the same amount of gas capacity as you have wind capacity. And this makes the whole thing extremely expensive. In fact, you end up possibly paying as much as four or five times for your power than need be. But the chickens are now coming home to roost. And in part two of When the Wind Stops, we're going to examine just what the government are up to with their plans to greatly expand onshore wind power. In 2020, Boris said, we believe that in 10 years time, offshore wind will be powering every home in the country, with our target rising from 30 gigawatts to 40 gigawatts. But wind farms offshore are so expensive that many times the cost of wind farms onshore, they simply cannot be afforded. Those spinning fiberglass blades just don't survive that long at sea. And the maintenance out there is so much more expensive. So that plan was ripped up. Boris has now gone for a threefold increase, not on offshore, but on onshore wind farms. So the seagull is happy now because less of them are going to be chopped up. Now on land, it's things like the migrating birds and maybe above all the bats, which a study showed that German wind farms kill over 200,000 a year. And the huge increase in onshore wind farms will guarantee we at least match that number. Today, we have about 26 gigawatts of wind power. By 2035, Boris adds 28 gigawatts to onshore wind to bring that total up to 40 gigawatts. So the total wind capacity by 2035 will be 54 gigawatts. This is going to lead to explosive problems for the simple reason that all that wind can disappear and be gone for long periods. For example, the nine days in recent times. So where does the power come from then? And that is the least of the problems. In the next episode, we'll explain to you how big the problems are, not just when the wind stops, but when it starts as well. This is a typical daily demand curve on the UK power grid. Obviously in the daytime here, there's a bigger demand than at night here. Currently this base load is around about 26 gigawatts, which is there 24 hours a day. This is best dealt with by things like nuclear or coal, but these sources cannot be changed quickly. For example, nuclear can take 12 hours to even stop and the cost of stopping and starting is enormous. Therefore, the amount of electricity the base load is producing cannot really be reduced. So what happens when the demand in the night, say, falls below what's being provided? We have to give the electricity away to Europe or even pay them to take it. That is part of what we call balancing the grid. Wind cannot be used for base load power because it can drop to zero, and we would have no means of replacing the power grid. The power grid has to be kept so that supply and demand are in balance. Too much generation at any time could cause damage to the infrastructure, and too little could cause blackouts. There is no economic way to store surplus energy. 
Pump storage schemes are great ways to store energy and are able to quickly release it, but the locations they can be used are very limited and in any event, they cannot be used for periods like nine days without wind power. The New York Times reports today that it's becoming almost routine for electricity prices to go negative in Britain, Germany and other European countries. Balancing costs for wind are rapidly increasing, but set to become much worse with Boris's plans. Balancing costs overall are now skyrocketing, up 48% from 2020 to 2021, and much more to come, but that is in the next part of this series. Well, we are told some great news here. Over 50% of the UK energy supply on Boxing Day was supplied by wind. Just let's do a fact check on the real story behind this. The problem is that even now with the current levels of wind generation, we have situations when the wind's high like this, like in Storm Dennis here, where we're having to pay people, pay Europe in this case, to take the energy from us or alternatively, pay the wind farm to turn off. So we're paying for the wind twice. Wind farms are paid for all the energy they can produce, regardless of whether we need it or not. So wind blowing overnight, and it does actually blow overnight, costs us a lot of money because it's unwanted extra energy. Up to 56 gigawatts of wind energy that we may not need. And Europe may not be able to take it. So we're going to have to close a lot of wind farms to cope with this demand, but we're still paying them. In this report, it seems the government want nuclear power to cope with the intermittent nature of wind power. But nuclear cannot do that. We've already explained you can't switch it on and off quickly. You can't cope with those peaks during the day. It is a baseload power, and you can't confuse the two. Wind cannot be changed for nuclear. And the misplanning of successive governments has ensured the Hinkley Point, our only planned nuclear power station at present, is way over budget and of course way delayed on its timescale. You could not make up the incompetence of governments. Well, frankly, being so stupid, it hurts. <laughs> This is just last month's percentage of the power supply in the UK supplied by wind. And look here, all these times when it's about 50%. Seems great at first. But the issue as always is the intermittent nature and other sources of energy have to step in numerous times even in a month to cope with a lack of wind which can go to practically zero. Now if we could store the wind energy, fine. I was the water resources engineer in charge of the area when Dinoic was built. This is one of the largest pump storage schemes in Europe. Dinoic is so large you can fit St. Paul's Cathedral inside its cave. And it produces, wow, 7.4 gigawatts of energy. But that's where people go wrong. 7.4 gigawatts for how long? Well, in actual fact, the total amount of storage in the upper lake of energy they store is just 9.1 gigawatt hours. On a typical day, the UK requires around about 768 gigawatt hours a day. So Dinorwick's storage of energy at 9.1 gigawatt hours just accounts for 1.2% of the daily demand of the UK. Now imagine what happens when you have nine days without wind power. Then you would potentially have to build 770 Genorwicks. And by the way, there are only three viable sites in the UK. Extinction Rebellion, the Green Movement and politicians really misunderstand these figures. They think that the rate of production is the same as the amount. It's like pouring water out of a bottle. What matters is the size of the bottle, not the rate at which you pour it. 